Make sense? Why do we have problems? All problems are generated, created by you. Your response. Our, our response. You are the creator. And the interesting thing is, you know, I have a son, my, my, my oldest son. Of course, his dad had problems. Because his dad had problems, and his dad learned to have his dad's problems in the environment. And guess what? I can only give my son, at that point in time, what I have within me. And, of course, his dad had problems. I was, you know, I interacted with him in an unhealthy way, the only way I knew how. And so, you know, he, he moved in with me, and, and he said, Hey, Dad, you know, I keep the house clean. I, you know, I take care of my son. I clean up. I wash my dishes when I come home. I said, Hey, that's cool. He wants to move in with us. Okay. And you do all this. Oh, yes, Dad, I'm pretty neat, clean, and tidy. <laughs> you know better, right? So he moves in, and guess what? He isn't. And then I say, hey, Adam, look, I wash my dishes and put it up. He says, Dad, you're so controlling. <laughs> and then he has a job. And he's working at the job, and there's a lady who's just like his father. And he gets tired of it. And so guess what? He moves to a new job. And there's a new lady there. Guess who she's just like? The lady he left, which is also like her father. And I said, Adam, there's one common denominator, and that's you you make peace with your father within you you will heal and this will fade from your life because we attract and do what we think is absolutely true and sometimes we may kill other people if they're going to try to change our model does that make sense <laughs> bottle changers model changers <laughs> all right all right so okay so the, all right, I want you to know this. What are the two models of the world? Model, lower model is what? They're doing it to us. The upper model is what? I'm responding to them. Why do you have problems? You're born. How do you have problems? That, how do you, you, you do it correctly. How do you have problems? You do it correctly. You do something inside to make it happen. You think the right way, you see the right things, you respond correctly. You have a belief system and attitude that produce it. And if, now here's the question, how do you change this stuff? All right, we know why you have problems, you're born. We know how you have problems because you learn how to develop this great skill. The next thing is, how do you make the changes? Isn't that true? That's the biggest part. But, so here's, here's the key, guys. And I believe, just like every experience here, Every one of these experiences are creating a dynamic you. Those of you who have been physically abused, sexually abused, emotionally traumatized, those of you who have the biggest crud will be the most greatest people on earth as you heal it. Now, here's, now every experience has basically two, two, two parts to this. It, it's a gift, first of all. The first gift is that you're going to take this emotional bad crud and you're going to play with it. That means you're going to rehearse it over and over again. You'll expect it. You'll look for it. You'll find it everywhere you go. That's one way of using your skill that you learn. And then you start to think the whole world is this way. That's one gift. And this gift will kill you. It'll destroy you. It'll make this bad problem bigger. Does that make sense? And the other part is you have another option. The other option is, say, wow, interesting bad feeling. How do I let it go? How do I change it? How do I release it? How can I let this heal me? That's another part. Every experience is there designed to heal you. And guys, if you die a miserable, painful death because you didn't let it go, when it's over, it's over. And that's what I believe. Now, some people say, well, Robert, you now with some of these beliefs here, you know, some people say, well, I chose this lifetime, and when I was uh, five years old, Uncle Joe sexually abused me. I chose this lifetime. I chose this to happen to me. This is my life lesson. And I don't believe that. My belief is this. I call it the shit happen syndrome. <laughs> is, that, is that, maybe I should clean it up. How would it? Crud happen syndrome. But the shit happens so much more powerful. It kind of grabs you. you know? <laughs> See, the deal is, now I'm getting to that, Chad, and that's what you're saying. All right, the crud happen syndrome. Sounds better? Yeah. No, you like the shit happens better? Shit happens. Yeah, but, but by the way, I want you to realize shit happens is also a judgment call on the stuff. You realize that? Mm -hmm. Or we could say opportunity happens. Stuff, stuff, stuff happens. All right.
Because, see, really, the shit happened has a judgment about the bad stuff, but the bad stuff has a good intention behind it. Yeah, life happens, yeah. But, but anyway, there's, anyway, so anyway, so all right, here it is, this little child, this stuff happened to them, right? They didn't chose it, they didn't make it happen, but at that point, from that moment on, what she does with it will determine the rest of her life. She's not, respo- she's not guilty because of it, but she is responsible with what she does with it. Does that make sense? Hold on, Dan. Pretty clear? She didn't make it happen to her. She didn't pick it. She didn't attract it. It happened. And from that moment on, she gets to figure out what she's going to do with it. In transit. Store high in transit. What does that mean? It, the manure had to be store high in transit because if it got wet, it would blow up the ship. And that's where oh, it's oh, an oh. acronym. What, what, what are you talking about? I want somebody. Shit okay. means is an acronym for store high in transit because the manure on the ship that was being transferred, if it got wet, uh, and it would start giving off gas and it would blow up the ship. So they had an acronym on the ships, store high in transit, the manure. Oh, so if you store it low, it would cause gas. It, it, water, yeah, it could, blow, it could get wet and blow up. Get over the, yeah, the, the, the affect associated to the word. It really meant store high in transit. Oh, I like that idea. So I can use shit now. <laughs> Doesn't mean as much. it doesn't, but if you explain it, it no longer, it will soon no longer have the impact. Yeah, that's true. It's going to take the power out of it. Actually, if you leave it down at the bottom, it'll blow up on you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yes, yeah, so that's a very good point. You keep it in the unconscious, it'll blow up on you. That's, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, that's true. But a fire and spark would represent some emotional. A trigger. Spark. A trigger. Yeah. There you go. You trigger. get a trigger and you blow up all that stuff that's been sitting there for a while. Now, w- there's a point when you start going, I'm choosing this. And you sort of, it sort of makes you angry that you find yourself choosing it. And I think people need to realize that there, uh, that they, there should be no guilt about it because they've been unconscious about the choosing the fact. Mm-hmm. Until they become conscious of how to get rid of it, they shouldn't feel guilty about the fact that they have been choosing it. Right. The next part I want to help you understand, um, uh, and, and I work with everything. You name it, I can work with it. Uh, and if you know, of course, I originally started with emotional sexual traumas, and uh, there's an aspect about this, you know. And I was working with this client, and of course, a, a, a family member was sexually abusing this child, abusing her, but she didn't know it was wrong. She didn't know. She was a kid. She thought that was normal. All right. So in her life, this was normal for her. And then when she, when she went to spend spend the night with somebody's house, she also presumed it was doing happening to her friends too. And then later out, she later on she figured out that that's not normal. All right. Now it doesn't matter if it was sexual trauma. You know, for some people, it is normal to always be pissed off all the time. That that's how life is because because this is this is the dynamics. All right. Uh, like like with your life, Chad. Being rejected, not being wanted. That's normal. And you know why? You back it up. Your parents had the same problem. Well, it doesn't matter if you take responsibility, Chad. That was the emotional dynamics, and it was handed to you. And you still operate and play with it sometimes. Now, with mine, my emotional dynamics was to being rejected and not being wanted. My mother at 14 ran away from home, got pregnant, came home, gave birth to me. I have no idea who my father is. And she was a a kid. 15 years old. By the time she was 19, she had four of them. She didn't want any of them. And so this emotional dynamics goes inside of us, and we start to operate as if it was normal. And you know what? It was. And she married someone who had the same basic emotional dynamics, and then we keep looking and finding. And the only way you're going to heal, the only way you're going to heal, remember how to all pro- how do you heal all problems? All right. So when anybody comes to see you as a, as a cl- practitioner, they want to come to see you. It doesn't matter if they want to knock strokes off their golf game. They want to improve their love life. If they want to, uh, whatever it is, I want to get rid of my depression. Everything, the reason why they want to come to, get, come to see you is because of this one. Why do they want to come and see you? Be- stuff they don't want. The most powerful force in the universe, unfortunately, is what you don't want. Pain, hurt. Anybody comes to see you, you're going to find out. What do you don't want? 
when anybody comes to see me, I have them write one list. And you know what that list is? Everything, all the crud in your life. What do you not want? Where's all the bad stuff? The powerful driving force in the world is what you don't want. And you know what? What you don't want has love underneath it all. Do you hear me? Underneath what you don't want has love underneath it. If you have a fear of snakes, if you have a fear of spiders, is that fear not trying to keep you safe? Absolutely. Being pissed off all the time. Every behavior, every action has a positive intention behind it. Every action, every behavior has a positive intention behind it. Based on your recorded information, what you believe to be absolute truth, based on what you've recorded and experienced. So, again, if this is true, when someone comes to see you or to see me and they have this horrible stuff, is it really horrible? The answer is no. You're not broken. You're not screwed up. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just doing a great job. Now, see, most people will see it as two, two parts, uh, fear and love. On that model, it's love, love. Of course, if you use the biblical, biblical model, God created everything, and everything is created, and it is all perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. But in order to heal, there are some key components you must address. What you don't want. What you don't want and release the emotional charge. The emotional charge is angers, fears, sadnesses, emotional traumas, guilt, helplessness, hopelessness, rejections, abandonments, um, embarrassment and shame, humiliation, anything that has a negative, negative, seemingly negative problem. Again, the greatest force, the law of attraction says, what you hold in mind, you track that of the same kind. Guys, if you have a lot of negativity inside you, and once you release the emotional charge behind it, it doesn't make you stupid. You hear what I'm saying? If you get rid of the negative charge, your fear of snakes, your, your, your angers, it does not make you stupid. You become wise. You get wisdom. You discover what you don't want. Make better decisions. When anybody comes to see you, it's what they don't want. Now, if somebody comes in and says, this is what I want. I want this, this, and this, and this. I say, all right, so you want to not, you want, uh, let's see, what would be a good problem? I don't want to be depressed. I want to be happy. I said, so you want to be happy? I said, yeah, what's keeping you from being happy? What is it? What's keeping them from being happy? Their resources, what they don't want. All right? I want to lose weight. What's keeping you from losing weight? I'm eating when I'm not hungry. I'm eating when I'm bored. I'm eating when I'm lonely. I'm eating because I need love. I'm eating because I need some emotional escape. All right? Now, this has a more powerful resource, but I want to lose weight. You see what I'm saying? It's what you don't want. And see, there's so many emotional dynamics here. So when anybody comes to see you, what are you looking for? What they don't want. How do you make all the changes? You look for what? What they don't want. And guess what happens if you get rid of what they don't want? It's easy to get what you want. Not define. Because see, that is true, define. But in, in some cases, like some people, usually I say, hey, what do you want? And the first thing they'll say, well, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. Guess what they're getting in their life? What well, they don't want. All right, now you can take their don't want list. I don't want all this stuff. And then, of course, you have to release the negative charge because what you don't want has more emotional power than what you do want. That's why you release what you don't want. What you don't want has more energy, more emotional juice, more emotional dynamics. So when somebody comes to see you, I always look for what? What they don't want. And their proof. Okay? Don't want. This is what you're looking for. 
And what you do want naturally occurs when you release the negativity. Well, well, you have to understand, Chad, what you don't want, the emotions involved with it, is emotional. And there is neural pathways in the brain that creates it. Yeah. But see, the point is, what you don't want. Release what you don't want. And, and you know, this is, um, I'll get you, but this is the key. If you, how many of you been to my seminars? All right. Oh, that's a stupid question. I already asked that, didn't I? All right. All right. You see people volunteer up here. And you know what I always do when they get here? I amp up what? What they don't want. They don't want. Oh. <laughs> Whenever you tapped on me because I had a fear that my grandson, because he's on meth, is going to end up dead, you zeroed in on my fear of him dying mm -hmm. and tapped that down. And when I talked to you before, I couldn't talk about it without just breaking down. <coughs> and I am able and was able to talk to my daughter about it and said, you need to accept the fact. You need to understand that that is a possibility. And if you can get rid of that, then you lose the fear. Well, not only, not only that. So why do we release what you don't want? Because what you don't want has more power, and the more you don't want it, guess what you get? The more, more of it. You more get of it. more of it. Mm -hmm. So when anybody comes to see you, you let go of what they don't want because what they don't want is what they do want. Now, I want you to think about it. What they don't want is what they do want. The lady came in, and she said, well, I don't want panic attacks. I said, okay, have you had panic attacks? Write a list. So we did this list of all the panic attacks. And so here it is, what she doesn't want has proof, has all the emotional references, all the memories to support with emotion what she doesn't want. And here she is, I said, well, when do you normally have panic attacks? She said, well, usually when I go to the mall. And of course, we go back to her memory. Guess what? She has people issues, experiences as a child in front of groups and this and that. And so what she doesn't want, and I said, all right, and we start cleaning the emotions, and we, there's, a, there's a system to the madness. We'll get to it. And, and so I start cleaning all this up, and then I said, okay, you're going to the mall. What happens when you get to the mall? There's a concept, and, I, and I'm going to give it to you now, but I'm going to go back over it in the second seminar, in the next series. What you do before you do affects what you do. <laughs> did, you, did you hear me? What you do before you do affects what you do. What you do before you do affects what you do. Well, do it. Thinking is doing. What you do before you do affects what you do. For an example, like if you, you know, before you go to say like a party or an event or you go to see somebody, if you get excited about going up there, then you'll be excited when you get there. Right. So what are you doing before you do? You're thinking about excitement, you're planning, you're right. seeing, you're imagining. And so next thing you know, when you get there, what happens? But let's say, for example, you're her. Before she stepped in the mall, you know what she was doing? She was seeing herself already having a panic attack before she ever got there. She was practicing her panic attack so when she got there, she'd have a good one. She was su successfully Surviving. inducing a trance to produce something she said she didn't want to do. Again, what are we looking for? What they don't want. What you don't want is the most powerful driving force in the world. And by the way, this don't want is trying to keep you safe. Which is also keeps bringing in what you say you don't want. Which is the craziest thing. And, and doesn't it make sense? It does, because an another good example, like uh, for instance, I, I kind of relate this a little bit to work, but it kind of relates to think pretty much anybody I've ever really met. Um, uh, usually people like to focus on the negative. Like, that what I do, like, my boss, like, he likes to only tell me things that I do wrong. I don't hear a lot of, like, oh, man, you did a good job doing that or hearing this. Not that I need that. It's just that I notice that, like, he only focuses on the negative, you know, as opposed to other people who will you know, give you both because that's good and constructive. Like, I, I relate that not only just to him, but a lot of people I've known, like, they've, they will notice when something's wrong. Like, hey, I notice, like, your, your arm's broken. But they don't notice, oh, well, you got a haircut. <laughs> they noticed something bad over something right. good yeah. that was, you know, different about you.
this is a very powerful powerful program guys and I may have mentioned it to you before it is a system that starts at birth they only pay attention usually with what's wrong they keep pointing out what you do wrong and the more you look at what you do wrong the more you do what is wrong when you go to school they put the red on the paper what you did wrong and it's an emotional system and that's what we're addressing so when somebody comes to see you what are you looking for what they don't want and then, which, and then when they come to see you, most people are right here in this model of thinking. I ha I, and they don't have the skills that you're getting here. They don't know that the, the pictures in their mind are not real. They don't know that they're the one who's creating it. They don't realize that they're making up the pictures to manifest and produce it. They're still right here, and they have very, very little skill. Their best coping skill is whenever they feel bad, go eat, go drink, go smoke, go 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 fight, go tote, go have sex, go work, go read a book, watch TV, try to avoid whatever it is on the inside looking outside to solve. Again, they're still here in this model. Outside forces fix the inside and there is no way to fix the inside except one way. You go inside, you release the negative with the positive and you change the meaning of the internal. Release the negative with the positive. Emotional driving forces. Does that make sense? This is the structure.